Hey, you're just mad because I'll be able to do something with my fucking guitar and hands that you'll never be able to achieve in your entire life, kid. So yeah, you're gay. <laughs> There are only two types of gamers that exist in the world. Those that play multiplayer games and those that are scared. But jokes aside, there's just something about multiplayer gaming that you just can't get anywhere else. Catching a dub with your homies feels like the peak of gaming sometimes. It's just something, an experience you can't get out of single player games. Even more wholesome is when it's with some randoms you're not even mic'd up with. I live for those moments in gaming when no one is communicating, but everyone's on perfect timing. However, I have a permanent problem with multiplayer games and no matter how much I love the game, I always end up hating the experience. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, perfect example. The community is in shambles right now and it's crazy because this is a long awaited game. 17 years in the making. The perfect 20 out of 10 long awaited generational anime game of the century. For a lot of anime fans, this is game of the year contender, which translates to a solid 8 out of 10 for most normal folks. But the fact that the community can take even such a cherished gem, such as the Tenkaichi series, and basically make it borderline unplayable is a testament to this issue I've seen in modern online gaming. So what's the problem you ask? Well, according to the internet, people are just finding interacting with the community, whether it be online or offline, of Sparking Zero, to be generally kind of insufferable. Like whether it's content creators complaining and arguing about competitiveness and balancing in an uncompetitive, non-balanced arena fighter, or it's the trolls in the comment section that are either backseat gaming, insulting you, or challenging you to a 1v1 and immediately ducking the fade, rage quitting faster than it takes Aslan Gold to upload his next video. Not only that, but people seem to be spamming the same five characters online, and, or either that or resorting to the bottom of the barrel cheese to get easy wins, which is just genuinely unfun and annoying to fight against. But I mean, let's be honest. We've all played an online game before, specifically anime games. We all saw this coming. It's just the climate of modern online gaming. This is just how things are. This is why we can't have nice things. I think Sparking Zero proves it doesn't matter how good the game, the developers, whether it's game of the year potential or not, every multiplayer game suffers to some extent and it's kind of cooked. Don't get me wrong. Multiplayer games are fun. Some of my funnest games I ever play. That's why I can't stop playing them. But unless you have a dedicated friend group for the specific game you're playing, or you just have a strong tolerance for BS, you're most likely going to have a bad time playing online with strangers. And these are pretty much the reasons why. You do not be talking to me all the time, bro. Stop talking like that, bro. It don't be you. Know, we, can not to, uh, we can go to a custom match. I will punish you. You will never do it. You will not. You will not. I'm telling you. Do you want to? Do you, do you want to do that? You will not. Uh, don't get started. Don't get started. Do you want to do we that? Can. We can. No, we will. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So to be real, I'm a bit of an unk. I've been playing video games longer than online multiplayer exists. And one thing I've noticed is the influx of casuals. Now, I've heard a saying that doing insanity is doing something over and over again and expecting a different result, right? Well, that's not a real definition. The real definition is playing with these randoms and unranked, okay? And I understand. Steph Curry of video game lobbies isn't gonna hop up in my video game. I understand that. I understand people aren't new to the game. They gotta learn somewhere. But while they're over there tying their shoes or whatever they're doing halfway across the map, I'm getting pieced up by the Avengers. And quite frankly, my back is broken. I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You my broke back is broken. What a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. My real issue here is that back in the day when gaming was more niche, you could expect the person besides you to have at least a sixty dollar investment in their video game, which means they kind of cared a little more, cared about engaging with the mechanics. They're more of a fan and just more engaged in the product in general. Now you have these modern day casuals who. To give a shit less about the state of the game or the game itself half the time they're afk or picking their nose whatever there's simply just too many newbies that have no idea what they're doing or how they get here 
and they stay fucking up my video game lobbies. Hell, for some people on your team, as a random, it might be their first video game. I don't know why they chose a multiplayer PvP as their first video game, but it happens. Think about it, you have no idea or control over your teammates, and when you really think about it, it gets kind of crazy. Like, for all you know, the person beside you could be AFK. It could be a literal baby. What has bro got? Bro, fly to us! Don't fucking worry about chests! Oh my god, I can't it's actually ass to Please, oh. please, bro, please. Uh, if you hear me, please, it's just my players. Hawks, I love please, you so much. Please, please, please. Go, bro, 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 bro. If you check like, and get in bushes, if, if he's still there. You see the boots are super close to my car? Go check in the bushes! Go check in the bushes! Go check in the bushes! Go the bushes behind you! It could be somebody, somebody going through a bit of a mental breakdown. The civilian evacuee. I really fucking hate this goddamn game. Right now. Why the fuck do I have to save the survivor three fucking times? Like, Y'all fix your fucking busted ass game, bro. It's like real shit. How is that not something you fucking fix? How is that something you still are going for? There's like a freeze and shoot, 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 freeze, shoot, 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 freeze, shoot, 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 freeze, shoot, shoot, shoot. This is the best fucking character in the entire fucking game. Okay, that shit is so fucking busted. I like, really gotta fucking nerf the shit out. Could be somebody drunk or high off God knows what. For anything, for all you know, they could be high off DMT. I'm hitting my DMT cart right now. I'm hitting it not enough to break through though. A few moments later. Oh my god. 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 Oh fuck I'm breaking through bro. So imagine you walked into a supermarket and the greeter was a literal baby. The employees all had mental illnesses, and the manager had never worked a job before in their life. That's solo queue. That's you. You're a cashier at that supermarket. That's pretty much solo queue. So what's the solution? We gotta gatekeep noobs. Nah, jokes aside, being constantly sold by new players can lead to some pretty toxic game practices like kicking them out of your lobby all the time. And yeah, it's just bad for noobs, bad for pros that have to play for noobs. It's just bad all around. On the other side is the sweats and the tryhards. It's always a beautiful thing to see another human being master of talent. Motivational even. But if you had to play Michael Jordan himself in a first of 21 basketball game, you'd probably get a little salty. No one wants to play against these types of players. And maybe I'm a little biased because I consider myself a sweat, not a tryhard. There's a bit of a difference. Simply put, if I'm playing a game, I try my hardest to win that game because it's fun to me to push my skills. I don't use the most broken stuff in the game unless it's fun to use that stuff. But I'm simply just trying to master the mechanics and, you know, get good. So I don't think there's anything wrong with playing to win. It's just players like that shouldn't be on a team facing off against Jimmy who just downloaded the game yesterday. It's even worse when you have a team based game like a MOBA. Where some people join discords and forums and band into what they call gaming clans to proceed to own ranked or unranked lobbies eight hours a day like it's a career path. All nigga synthesis. Unlike the bonds of friends and family, which are mutually beneficial, nigga synthesis is based on a mutual appreciation for ignorant or trivial things. Now when a nigga moment collides with nigga synthesis, you get a complete Content creators by nature of the business hype up a lot of extremely unbalanced things in the game which leads to an influx of everybody abusing the meta. And again, this isn't fun for everybody. I feel like a simple solution to something like this is to just be able to opt out of certain matches. Like if I'm playing Sparking Zero, the, the ability to opt out of fighting SS4 Gogeta mains would be goaded or the ability to only solo queue against other solo queue players. But yeah, that's how sweats kind of get in the way of multiplayer gaming. Online gamers, I want you to imagine a world where your wins or losses were not determined simply by how much money you spent. 
that used to be the norm. I find it funny how anywhere someone thinks about criticizing a game, the inevitable skill issue comments pop up immediately. When in modern gaming, I think skill is at an all-time low. There's just so many options to supplement your lack of skill. Because most games are developed with profit in mind and player experience is an afterthought. So it's no surprise how busted the newest add-ons are in a game usually are. It doesn't take a rocket science to know hardcore fans are practically forced to buy the latest microtransactions or DLC in order to keep up with everyone. And the whole thing turns into this kind of gotcha fueled weeaboo arms race with DLC and broken shit. FOMO, gotcha, and the sheer amount of this DLC in these games low key killing any semblance of skill left in the game. And yet everybody wants to talk about skill issue. If you don't keep up with the latest DLC religiously, simply put, it's just too hard to keep up. If you spent too much time away from these types of games, good luck purchasing the 10 different DLCs in order to stay relevant. This is the part most of us weeb gamers saw coming with Sparking Zero. Anime gamers are just the most pea-brained, emotionally stunted, petty, overall, mentally ill delusional play race of all gaming. Yeah, I said it. These fans have been ruining games for far too long and we gotta call it up. Please, anime niggas, grow as people. Rage quitting is just a fact of life in these games. And I'm not sure how bad it is in other online games, but it's the norm around here. It's baffling how serious people take the least serious games. When you play something like Tekken 8, people generally have better sportsmanship, and that game actually requires skill. I feel like the more skill a game requires, the more humble the person is. The sad thing is these anime games don't even have real ma ranked matches half the times. Like in this one Naruto game I played, you only rank up if you win, and you don't rank down if you lose. You even get some points for just participating. The only way to actually rank down is to disconnect or rage quit too frequently. And they still do it. So basically, in a meaningless ranking system, there are people willing to rage quit and lower rank rather than just accept the L and move on. You can't make it up. Just as common as rage quitting is people exploiting the game in any way, shape, or form for easy Ws. If that doesn't work, they'll just hack the whole game, throw the whole chessboard over. A lot of anime games are low budget and there's just going to be bugs and people are going to find them, exploit them without a second thought. Doesn't matter how unfun the exploit is, there's no questions. They're going to spam that shit. It's not even a second thought. People mod, hack games, and I don't really think this is exclusive to anime games. I've seen this as a growing trend in all multiplayer games, first person shooters, and I just got to ask why. I personally enjoy PvP because I find it the ultimate form of testing my skill. But you can only get so far before you've mastered a CPU or learn to exploit its bad programming. How will I truly know I'm the best unless I'm teabagging kids online? I can't understand the thrill of playing God and flexing broken shit just to troll. I mean, it's fun for about five minutes having a God complex, but any normal person will get tired of that pretty soon. So I gotta ask, how does continuously artificially winning games do anything for anyone's ego? The win's not earned and you still suck at the game. I don't even think the devs can keep up with the amount of people hacking because it's not like they want hackers in their game. I mean, if somebody can completely mod every pay to win option, terrible microtransactions into their account, that's bad for business. So I don't think the problem is companies just turning a blind eye. I really think they just can't keep. Anyway, just another problem, many problems that is online modern gaming. The real issue here is that when you're playing online, you really can't see who's on the other side of the screen, so it doesn't really matter to you. Most people say things like, I spent $60 on this game, I play it how I want. Well sure you can do that, but the multiplayer game involves other people. Basically by saying that, you're selfishly saying, fuck everybody else's experience, my experience is the only one that matters. And that, you can do that, but that type of thinking actively ruins communities. As long as I get what I want out of the game. It's fine. That mentality works for a single player game, but you share this space with other people. You gotta remember that. But anyway, that's why I just stay to single player games as much as I can, even though I absolutely love playing online. Basically, what I'm saying is you need some friends to play these online video games because it's just not as fun playing against strangers.